everyone to today's YM worship. Uh, so glad that you're able to join us uh, for this time. Um, can we get me on the camera up here? Thank you. All right, yeah. Well, glad that you're all here to join us. Before we continue, just some announcements real quick, okay? Uh, first off, I apologize. There's a bit of confusion. I know I had said starting in July we would have Friday nights again, but there was a schedule conflict that I didn't think about last Friday, this past Friday. So I know a few of you texted me and were like, are we having Friday night tonight? And I had to say, no, I'm sorry. So we are going to have Friday night, though, this week, all right, this Friday. Uh, it's going to be a time to gather together uh, to talk about um, some of the worship stuff. We're going to have time of worship. We're going to have time of fellowship. So looking forward to that. So hopefully uh, you guys can come join us this Friday. It's going to be from 7.30 to 9, okay? So not, you know, normally we do like two full hours, 7.30, 9.30. But during the summer, we're going to do 7.30 to 9. Okay, so just a heads up on rides, uh, let them know that they need to pick you up a little bit early, okay? Another thing is, uh, Steve, I think I have a QR code. Uh, could you put that up there? Uh, this is for Korean school. If you are interested in being a Korean school volunteer, uh, helping out with that, uh, if you can scan this, the principal is asking for help. Uh, so if you're interested in helping for Korean school, if you can scan this, um, and that will send you to an application for the volunteers to help out with that, okay? So uh, see a couple people with phones, okay? Yeah, so just a heads up. Um, yeah, if you're interested in helping for Korean school, this is the uh, link to the um, volunteer application. All right, Steve, thank you. Also a reminder, today is retreat payment day. I know some of you, like your parents gave you money that you need to give to me. It's today and next week, okay? So you can give me money today or next week. I saw some of you were like, oh. Yeah, you can also do it next week after YM service, okay? So we'll be in the back there from 1.15 or after YM service, uh, whenever we end till about 1.30, okay? So just a heads up for that. Uh, if you want to be a part of turning that in, um, yeah, we'll just have a table set up in the back for that, all right? So just a reminder, it's 150 per student, and then obviously it's a $10, not obviously, but it's a $10 discount uh, for each sibling. So if there's two of you, then it ends up being... $290, $10, $10 stu uh, sibling discount, so $1090. And then if there was three siblings, $430, all right, $430. So just a heads up for that, all right? I know that most of you, it's your parents are just like, give this money to Pastor Justin. Okay, so uh, we'll take it after service, all right? And to, uh, on that note, just for clarification, okay, I know that two weeks ago I talked about how there's a bit of a situation going on with Joyelle, a bit of a miscommunication. So was looking possible that we might not be able to go to an actual retreat center. Uh, thankfully, it looks like after some discussion and a lot of back and forth that we will be able to go to Joyel uh, and just kind of have a normal retreat there, okay? So, um, yeah, we'll just plan accordingly. If any changes do come, hopefully not, uh, I will let you know as soon as possible. It'll probably be sent uh, to your parents through email. Uh, but hopefully there are no further issues. We'll be good to go, um, and there are no sort of surprises that remain for me, okay? Also, I know I can, I can introduce or I can um, reveal to you all the theme uh, and also just a little bit more information. So our theme for this upcoming retreat is Radiant, okay? Radiant, which is based off of Hebrews 1.3. Radiant uh, from Hebrews 1.3. And this idea uh, of God uh, being radiant in glory and Jesus being his radiant the perfect representation of how awesome and wonderful and great and loving our God is, right? So uh, radiant based off Hebrews 1.3. Uh, so looking forward to that time. Obviously, you'll hear more about what that theme is and everything as we get there. Uh, and our guest speaker, okay, we do have a guest speaker for Summer Retreat, as we often do. Uh, his name is Pastor Byung Kim, okay, or Byung Ham, sorry, Byung Ham. Uh, and he uh, has preached at Philippi before, but a long time ago like when you guys were all in CM or some of you, like, maybe you were like a baby, right? So it's been a while since he's last preached here, uh, but he's really looking forward to coming, uh, preaching and sharing the word. I had a Zoom call with him this past week. He's looking forward to being here and connecting with you all uh, for this upcoming retreat, all right? Okay, those are all the announcements that I have. So if you have your Bibles, if you could please open up to today's passage, which comes to us from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Again, that's Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. 
And as you get there, if I could ask you to please stand for the reading of God's Word, if you're able to. If you don't have your Bibles with you, uh, you can also follow along on the screen, as always, uh, as we have that there, okay? So again, this is Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. This will be a familiar passage, probably, to many of you. And it says, and this is Jesus speaking, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. That is the word of the Lord. Uh, you may be seated. As we continue this service time, if I could ask you all to join me uh, in a time of prayer. Let's pray. Father, Heavenly Father, as we are gathered here and we go into this time in the Word, would you open our hearts and our minds to have great expectation and hope in who you are? Thank you for being a God who hears us. Would you delight in this time and would you help me to worship you and rightly handle the word of truth. Would you be honored in the way that we engage in what is true, and would your love and fatherhood be re uh, revealed even deeper to us? We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I've noticed something, right, as I've lived a few more years than uh, you all here, right? There's a certain trend that happens for a lot of people, it happens for all people across various cultures, but in particular for uh, Asian Americans, I've observed this trend that happens starting late, uh, late high school, early college. And I know some of you might think like, oh, this is something new, this is what's popular right now, right? But what happens is in like late college, early high school, a lot of Asian Americans start getting really, really interested in lifting weights, okay? There's this desire to hit the gym, right? And now, again, I know some of you all, you're, you're getting into that right now, and you think, and some of you actually, maybe you're a bit younger, and you're like, I will never lift a weight in my life. Well, be careful, right? Because I know plenty of people who said that, and then all of a sudden, they get addicted to it, right? But I think some of you, you're saying, you're saying, Oh, no, this is happening right now. This is new. It's not new, okay? This has happened always through time. In fact, you're basic, okay? You're basic. All right, I just need to say it. All right, it's happened all the time. Happened to my older brother. Happened to all my friends. I've seen it year after year. All of a sudden, you can start hitting like 16, 17 years old. You're like, man, I want to start lifting weights, right? And so it happens a lot. Guys and girls, right? Everyone wants to get fit. Now, I'm joking around a little bit, right? But in all reality, I see it happen a lot. Now, okay, also just to clarify, I was one of the few who was like, ah, that's too much work, man. That's too much time. So I never really got, I tried. I was like, I want to be cool. I was like, I don't know. It's, yeah, you all have fun. Spend an hour at the gym. It's okay. I'm good, okay? Now, I'm joking. I'm joking around. But the thing is, I think we can all agree, though, okay? Whether you like it or not, we can all agree. Weightlifting, though, it's a good thing, right? Like, it's a good thing. It keeps people healthy. If you're doing it, I'm like, hey, more power to you. I'm happy for you. Get you strong. It's not a bad thing at all. I, I, I like to make fun of my friends who love the gym, you know, but it's a healthy thing. It's a good thing. We can all agree with that, right? It's good, okay? What I've observed, though, is everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people dabble in it, right? They try it out. But I've observed that for the people who really stick around, the people who stay consistent and really get into it, they're the ones who receive help. Okay? What I mean is, there are a lot of people who try to get into it, who go to the gym, and if some of you have been to the gym maybe recently for like the first time, or if you want to remember that experience, it's really intimidating, actually. Like you go and you see all these machines, you see these people who are like jacked, and they're just like, they know what they're doing, right? And you're like, oh my goodness, it's really intimidating, right? And so you don't know what to do. And so that's why I'm saying, I've observed that the people who continue doing it, they're the ones who get help, right? Whether it's maybe a friend who also waitlists, they're a bit more experienced, so they help them out, 
or maybe you like join like a personal training program or it's like through school or now we have like professor YouTube right YouTube teaches us everything and so you do that and you can learn but slowly when you get that help when you get direction when you get clarity when you know what you're supposed to do that really helps people stick right and that's the same for any hobby any other situation that we get into even if you're like I that's just, I don't care about weightlifting. That's fine, right? But any other thing, right? Any other hobby that you're trying to skill, what I've observed is the people who generally stick around long term are people who get help. And if you don't get help, if people aren't there to walk with you, if there isn't direction, there isn't a program, there aren't people who tell you these are some of the steps that you need to take, what happens is most of those people, they end up stopping, right? They don't know what to do. There's a lack of confidence. Like, how am I supposed to go about this? What's the good thing? What's the proper way to go? Now, the reason I bring this up, right, all of this up, is because I, as I was preparing this week's sermon, I realized that actually, when it comes to our prayer life, it's a lot like this. It's a lot like this, because all of you in here who have grown up in the church, you've been told, okay, it's time to pray, right? Your parents will make you pray. They'll tell you prayer is important. You'll hear sermons from people like me tell you you need to pray. But what I've observed is that a lot of times we don't know how to pray. We're told we need to pray, so we're given like this kind of general, dear God, thank you for this day, thank you for this food, right? And then you kind of pray this thing. But when it comes to just day-to-day -day prayer, you're not really sure how to pray. You know it's good. But what I've observed is a lot of you don't stick around. You don't keep praying because you don't receive the clarity, the help. Now here's the thing though. You might feel like, I don't know how I'm supposed to pray, what I'm supposed to pray for, but I will say that the reality, truth, is the farthest from this. I believe that we as Christians have some of the clearest instructions on how to pray. And that's found in the passage that we read today called the Lord's Prayer. I think it's something that, how many of you are familiar with what we read today, the Lord's Prayer? Okay, you can raise your hand. Most of you are raising your hand, right? You've heard it at some point. But it's something that I think we don't practice in our day-to-day -day lives. Ask yourself, when's the last time you prayed the Lord's Prayer in your life? When's the last time you prayed it? When's the last time you even thought about what is the Lord's Prayer? What does it say? And I think that's a shame because I think that Jesus literally taught us how we are to pray. He gives us an outline of how we should pray. He's basically being like our personal trainer, right? He's being YouTube to us and he's telling us how we can get jacked in Jesus' name, right? He's saying, this is how you pray. This is the program. This is what you need to do. And yet so many of us were like, I don't know how to pray. I don't like praying. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say when Jesus has taught us what we're supposed to be praying about, at least in part. So today we're starting a new sermon series that's going to last for about, I think, a couple months. And it's going to be focused on the Lord's Prayer. And each week we're going to like almost line by line break down what does this prayer say that will hopefully offer us clarity and direction in how we can pray. Because I don't think that any of us, we're not allowed to say, I don't know what to pray about. I don't think we're allowed to say that because I think Jesus gives us a very clear direction on what we can be praying about. We're allowed to pray about other things that aren't here, what we're going to talk about, but at least this, Jesus shows us this is what we should be praying about. Now, before we jump into this time and we read this passage and learn more about it, I just want to make a note real quick about this sermon series. Because there's a couple things that I won't address in this sermon series, explicitly, okay, at least. Because I've addressed them before. The first one is some of you might say, well, why should we even pray in the first place? Okay, why are we even praying? What is prayer? I actually preached on this in a sermon titled, be a prayer, okay? And that was on November 27th last year, okay? So if you're like, Pastor Justin, but why should we even bother praying, all right? You can go back and watch that sermon on the YouTube page, okay? Be a prayer, November 27th. 
And then, if you want more context on what's happening in the Lord's Prayer, what is Jesus talking about in our heart approach to it, what is everything that's being said here, kind of the context, I also preached on that uh, in, a title, or in a sermon titled, The Heart of Worship, on August 4th of last year. Okay, so I know some of you guys, you're just like, Ugh. well, I'm putting it now, it'll be on the YouTube page, okay? If you were like, wait, what were those sermons again? You can watch this again and go back and watch those. I'm not going to be addressing those topics explicitly during this series because we've already addressed those in the past, okay? Now, with that said, let's jump into today's time. For some context, right, for some context on this passage, Jesus is preaching the Sermon on the Mount, okay? It's one of the greatest single sermons given in all of Scripture that Jesus gives to the disciples and to people who are listening to him, who are following him. And in today's passage, he addresses the topic of prayer. So if you're sitting here wondering, I don't know what to pray about, I don't know how to pray, Jesus offers us a clear answer, okay? Now first, to establish something very clear as our kind of introductory point, okay? I just want to make this clear to all of you. If you say, I am a Christian, I am a follower of Jesus, you have to be praying. You must pray. That is a command from God. If you are here and you're saying, I am a Christian, but I, I haven't really been praying at all. I haven't been praying in a long time. I want to remind us, just at the very surface level, we need to be praying. This is a non-negotiable for Jesus. When you look at Matthew 6, verse 7, and then also Matthew 6, verse 9, okay, we read this. It says, and when you pray, right? That's verse 7. And then verse 9, it says, pray then like this. It doesn't say, hey, and if you pray, or hey, if you find the chance when you're able to, it says, when you do, there is an expectation. You pray like this. We are supposed to be praying. So, if we're supposed to be praying, how? How should we be praying? Well, as we pray, often all of you, we, we start with an address, right? We are addressing who we are praying to, who we're directing our prayers to, who we're talking to. That's going to be our focus for today. Who are we praying to? When we say prayer, the simplest definition that we often give is what? Talking to God, right? That's prayer. You hear that from when you're in CM. Prayer is talking to God. And so we often start with a very, we're trained to have a very specific address in our prayer. We address our prayers. How do we start a lot of our prayers? Dear God right? Dear God. That's how we often start our prayers. Now, I want you to note something. This is not how Jesus starts or addresses the Lord's Prayer. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying dear God is bad. But note that Jesus here chooses not to start with dear God. In verse 9, we read, our Father in heaven, our Father. Jesus could have said anything. He could have said, dear God. He could have said, oh Lord. He could have said, king of kings. He could have said, master. And all of those would be true. But in this passage, Jesus chooses to say, Father. Our Father. So what? Who cares? I think this is important. This is extremely important, okay? I want this to sink in for you because it makes us, Jesus is making us consider who are you praying to? And what Jesus exemplifies, the outline he gives us is you are praying to your heavenly Father. And that greatly impacts how we address our prayers. It greatly impacts our posture, our perspective, the way that we pray, the way that we even view prayer. Jesus is saying, the one that's listening, the person on the other line, right, as you're calling, as you're talking to him, the other person is your heavenly Father. 
The way we start an address to someone, whether we're calling, sending a text, an email, writing a letter, that really impacts the way that you talk to them. Think about it this way, all right? I have a general relationship with a lot of you, but I know to an extent how, what our relationship is like based on the way that you all address your texts to me. I had a conversation recently with a few of you students, and some of you were saying, like, I'm so afraid to text you, right? <laughs> and I, you don't need to be, all right? I, I promise, okay? You can just talk to me, right? But sometimes I'll get the, hey, PJ, or hi, PJ. If it's a, hey, PJ, hi, PJ, then I know, okay, this is someone who, they, they just have, want to talk to me, right? Like, there's, the way they address me, the way, it, it really shapes the way they view me, right? But then you get other ones where normally it's some of you younger ones who you're asking me a question or maybe you didn't turn something in and it's a dear Pastor Justin, right? And that address, dear Pastor Justin, compared to hi PJ, they're different, right? They feel different. You're talking to the same person, but the way you address the text really shows your heart in that approach. The other thing I've noticed is when you guys are doing something that you know is gonna disappoint me, that's also when I get the, hello, Pastor Justin, period, right? Because you're like, I'm really sorry. I know I had signed up to join for this thing, but after a school conflict, I am unable to join. I really apologize, right? And now a lot of you are feeling uncomfortable because you're like, oh my gosh, I did that. Well, let me give you a bit of comfort. All of you have pretty much done that to me at some point, okay? My, half of my job is getting ghosted or disappointed by you guys, okay? All right, so just don't feel bad, okay? It's a, it's a common occurrence, all right? But that address... I'm not bitter, don't worry, all right? That address is quite different, right? Hey, PJ, hi, PJ, how are you? Is different from dear Pastor Justin. I think in a way that illustrates what Jesus is doing here. He could use any of the other addresses that are true and that are good. Our Father, that's what he goes to. He could have said, dear God. He could have said, oh, King. He could have said, oh, Master, but he chooses Father. That impacts the way that we view God. And I think Jesus is trying to make us shift our perspective to say, you are my Father. How does then God being our Father impact the way that we pray? How does that change the way that we view him? Now, first, as a simple point, okay, another simple point. God being our father, that means that we are, you are his children. Okay, real quickly, if you are here and you would say that you are a Christian, you believe in God, I, I want you to say something. It's going to be a little awkward, okay? But on the count of three, I want you to say, I am a child of God. Okay, ready? One, two, three. I am a child of God. I am a child of God, okay? Man, that's, this is good news, man. This is good news. In fact, I think it's crazy that we don't wake up every day and we're like, ah, I'm a child of God, right? I think it's because we lose that. But look at this, okay? In John 1, 12, how do we become a child of God? It says, but to all who did receive him, and this is Jesus, him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We become children of God because we are adopted through the gospel that Jesus died for us, that Jesus defeated sin and death. And when we place our faith in him, we are adopted into his family and we are his children. That's what PD spoke about last week during our family service. I know a lot of you were gone last week, right? But for those of you who were there, he talked about the gospel. When we believe in him, we are counted as his children. That is good news. Now, why? Why is it good news that God is our father and we are his children? Okay? That leads to kind of our first major point, and it's this. God being our father means that we can approach him with an honest, intimate, and hopeful heart. God being our Father means that we can approach Him, we can approach prayer 
with an honest, intimate, and hopeful heart. Ephesians 3, verses 11 through 12, it says this. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, verse 12 here is important. It says, in whom? In Christ Jesus, we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. What this is saying is God is the King of kings. God is the Lord of lords. God is the greatest. He is everything above all, the creator of everything. And yet, through Jesus, we can approach him with boldness and confidence. Think about that. We can be honest with him. We can say, God, this is where I'm at. This is how I'm feeling. I want to talk to you because you're my father. I want to share with you. I want to speak to you. I think about people in your life that you greatly look up to. Sometimes they feel really scary to talk to, right? You're like, oh, I don't... Even people that you like. My little brother, uh, he, he was visiting me for just a little bit, and I was talking to him. And, uh, you know, at VBS, for those of you who are VBS, I, I was talking about how I'm a, I'm a Denver Nuggets fan, right? I love as a basketball team, right? And there's a player for the Nuggets. Uh, he's a point guard. His name is Jamal Murray. Okay, Jamal Murray. I love that man, right? My little brother was telling me he actually went to this event because he lives in Denver. He got to meet, it's like one of his favorite athletes, right? He got to meet him in person. It was like a really quick, literally like, you know, there's like a thousand people, just like, yeah, like five, you know, it was like a meet and greet, right? So think about someone like that in your life. And I was talking to my little brother. I was like, what did you say to him? And he was like, I don't know, man. I blacked out, right? All I remember is I was there and then he said, thanks, man. And then he fist bumped me and I was like, what did I just say, right? But There are people in our lives where we're like, they're so great, they're so amazing, we feel intimidated to talk to them, right? Or if you're like, if I ever met this person, I would feel really intimidated. But what we see here is that God being our Father, while He is the King of kings, He is the Lord of lords, He is the one we should be the most intimidated, afraid to approach, because He's our Father, we can go to Him with boldness and confidence. We can say, I love you, and I need you to hear from me. This is what I'm going through. I'm struggling through this. We can be honest about God. I I feel sad about this. I'm frustrated by this. Can you help me in this? We don't need to be embarrassed by that. But in fact, he says, come to me. He delights to hear from us. We have access. That's amazing, guys. I know some of you might be tired right now, but I, I hope that that sticks with you. We have access to our Heavenly Father. In 1 John 3, 1, it says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us. Why, what kind of love the Father has given to us. That we should be called children of God. So we are. The NIV translation translates this as, See what love He has lavished upon us. He's poured it out upon us. He's covered us with His love. Jesus starts the Lord's Prayer with our Father because he wants our hearts to recognize in the deepest depths of our soul how much he loves and cares for us and how we can go to him and share our honest thoughts, our prayers, our hopes in him. When you think about like kind of the uh, greatest TV show dads, right? Think about in your, you know, all the TV shows or something. Is there a particular dad that you're like, man, that TV show dad is the best dad? The one that I think of uh, is from the show Full House. If any of you guys have watched it, it's an old show. I think they made a spinoff. Uh, in my opinion, it's not good, right? But Full House is a sitcom, and the dad that I love is Danny Tanner, played by Bob Saget. I think I have a picture of him. Uh, yeah, that guy right there, right? Danny Tanner. He's like, in my opinion, the best TV show dad, right? If you've ever watched Full House, basically, it's the same premise every episode. The kids do something, or someone does something like foolish, there's a problem, and then they have to confess it, and then they all get together and they're like, I love you, it's okay, and then there's music, and and then everyone's happy, right? That's like almost every episode, but you just feel good after it, right? And I love Danny Tanner. He's just like the ultimate TV show dad. But the thing that I love the most about him in the show is that, as you can even see in this picture, he's always willing to hear from his children. 
even if they fail, even if they made mistakes, even if he's angry at them, he's always willing to listen to them and hear from them and have them be honest with him. The same is true for us today. Our heavenly Father desires to hear from you, to show compassion upon you. He calls you to him. He showers, lavishes love upon you. Now, that's the first point. Second, God being our Father means that he deserves our utmost honor and respect. God being our Father means that in our prayers, He deserves our utmost honor and respect. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 5 through 6, Paul is talking about people who are worshiping these false gods, these idols. And he says this, For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, right, these fake idols, Paul says, yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. Paul is saying God is the only God, and he's the one who's created everything, who knows everything, who holds everything. He deserves our respect. So for us in our prayers, we are saying our Father, He calls us to Him, He wants us to be intimate with Him, but He also wants us to not be casual. He deserves our respect. In our prayers, do you show Him honor? I think a lot of times we, we fail to do this. We get a little casual. But we know that we need to show respect to people who are above us, right? After service today, as you go out into the halls, and you see a ajumma or ajashi walk by you, what do you do? Right? We bow. Right? But we bow, right? Because we're showing respect. We're saying, okay, you are above me. Right? Even though I might not always agree with you or see eye to eye with you or whatever, to our spiritual fathers and mothers who are a part of this church family, we show respect. How much more so do you think God requires us to show him respect? Don't get too casual with him. Are we allowed to be intimate? Yes. Honest? Yes. Comfortable? Yes. But not careless. Because sometimes I think in our prayers we say things, right? We just get I don't want to pray. Sometimes you're like, oh, I should pray. Okay, we have to get out of there. Amen. Right? Where we just treat him like this thing that we can just like toss aside. Are you treating him? your Father, your Heavenly Father, with respect. I think we do this to God, but we need to be careful how we approach Him. I remember hearing this uh, comedy sketch uh, from a comedian a while back, and he, he talks about uh, how you know, he had friends when he was growing up in elementary school who would call their parents by their first name, right? I don't know if any of you guys had friends like that. I did, right? I had a friend who called his mom, Lori! Right? I remember I was like, what? Right? Like, what are you doing? Right? Because we just feel like that's so disrespectful. And so the comedian, right, I don't, I don't endorse this, but he was like, parents, right, you got to discipline your kids more, right? I think a lot of times we approach God with a really casual mindset. We're basically just calling him by his name, right? disrespecting him. The way that we approach him, the way that our hearts are, but him being our father also reminds us he, he holds authority over us. He is greater than us. So don't get casual with him. Show him honor and respect. And the final point. The first, right, God being our father means that we can be honest and intimate and hopeful in prayer. Second, it means that we need to show him our utmost respect and honor in our prayer. And then finally, this one's probably the hardest pill to swallow was that God, being our Father, I think Jesus is reminding us that we must trust that He knows what is best for us. That God, being our Father, means that we need to trust that He knows what is best for us in our prayers. There will come time in your lives where you are praying about something, where you think you know for sure what you need, 
God, I need this. You need to help me with this. Answer this prayer. You will say, this is what I need. And God will not answer. Or he will not answer in the way that you want. He may even say no to your biggest dream. But in those moments, as we pray, as we say, Father, we need to remember he knows what is best for us. Even for some of our earthly parents, right, our parents here, it's annoying, but there are a lot of moments that happen in our lives where you disagreed with them, right? But then later on you realize they were right. right? It's like such a horrible feeling. Like, I got this. All right, you're right, right? But it happens. Again, my little brother was over, and I was like trying to think of an example, and he told me, I was like, oh, it's perfect. The Lord has shined upon me today, right? He was like, he, he flew in, and he was like, man, I came here, and it was so hot out, right? So um, as I was driving to the airport, she told me, you should bring a jacket, right? You should wear a jacket. It's cold in the airplane, right? It gets cold in the airplane. And he was like, it's so hot out. I'm going to be fine. And he was like, I could not. I was shivering like the whole plane ride, right? Like I couldn't sleep because I was so cold. I was like, yeah, Alma was right. And that happens with our earthly parents. There have been, I'm sure for each of you, where you're like, no, I know what's best, Alma. You don't know me, Appa. You're too old. And they tell you something. But then as time goes on, you look back and you're like, well, darn. <laughs> right? Like they were right. Whether it's something at school or an activity, or some action that you've been doing. Sometimes our earthly parents, they, they're, not, they're not foolish, right? Sometimes they know. But they do make mistakes. But our heavenly Father, He knows what is best for us always. We may like to think, I know what's best. But we need to remember that God being our heavenly Father means He is the one who knows. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 through 11, Jesus is talking about people who ask God for things. And he says this, Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Right? It's a funny image, right? You're like, can I have some bread? And then your dad's like, yeah, here's a rock. Take it. Enjoy. Right? No. It's obviously, that's ridiculous. Verse 10. Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? Verse 11. If you then... So he's talking to the people. If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask? God gives us only good things. Sometimes what we pray about, we think we know what is good. But God is saying, I know what is better. God, as our Father, moves us to trust Him because He knows what is best for us. There are going to be prayers that you keep praying about. God, why didn't this work out the way it did? Some of you older students, I see it every year. Why didn't I get into the school that I wanted to go into? I think that was my dream. Why did my family have to go through this tragedy? Why is this thing happening? Why am I still suffering from anxiety or depression? God, what are you doing? But in that, as we remember that he is our father, I want it to be a reminder for each of us that he knows what is best and that the answer may be coming. It may take time, but he is working it for good. This morning, I've shared with you all pretty openly. I, have a, I battle with some anxiety issues. Right? I have anxiety attacks more often than I would like. And as I knew I was preaching on this, and Sundays I feel anxiety. This is kind of the day that we all gather, right? I was praying to God, and I said, God, take this away. I don't want to suffer like this anymore. But as I was praying that, as I knew I was preaching on this, I also felt the call to say, but you are my father. I'm going to trust you. If it doesn't happen today, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to hope for tomorrow. But even in that, I'm going to trust that you know what is best. It's not always the most comforting thing to hear. But I hope 
that it gives you clarity and maybe some comfort in knowing that he knows what is best. So when we sing, don't just sing, you are perfect in all of your ways without thinking about what that means for your life. That in the brokenness, in the disappointment, even then, he is perfect in all of his ways. So how can we respond to this? First off, I just want to challenge you all, okay? As we're starting this sermon series on the Lord's Prayer, let's pray. Take time to pray this week, okay? Make space to pray. And when you pray this week, try, start it with my Father. Father. Maybe for some of you, right, Appa, right? Is that weird, right? You're like, whoa, that's kind of weird. He is. He is your Father. Take that pray. Start praying. Make the time to do so. And are you approaching him honestly? Are you approaching him with respect? Are you approaching him with trust? And on that, one thing I would also, just as a side note, encourage you all to do is in your prayers, practice gratitude. I think that's one way we recognize how great he is. Okay, God, a lot of times, it's really easy for us to pray about things we want. Like, God, I need this. Help me in this. Why isn't this happening? But next time, pray, God, Thank you for this. Place God where he belongs, as the heavenly provider, as your father. Show him respect. Thank you for giving me a home. Thank you for showing me love. Thank you for being there for me. Thank you. Start there. Does that make sense? Let's try that this week, okay? Now, just to clarify, before we wrap up here, praying other names, it's okay, right? You're allowed to say, dear God, you're allowed to say, Lord, right? That, that's all good. And I hope you don't feel like, oh, I, I, oh, I shouldn't have, have I been doing it wrong this whole time? No, that's all good. Again, just like I was talking about, the different names we use, sometimes it shifts the way that we view God. But what I want to direct our attention to is that Jesus, in the Lord's Prayer, in this space to teach us how to pray, he chose Father. In different circumstances, you may want to say, Lord, dear God, O oh, King, whatever, But in our day-to-day prayer, I think Jesus wants us to remember that God is our heavenly Father, okay? So you're not doing anything wrong praying in those other titles, but remember Father. As we continue this series, I'm excited. I hope this is going to be helpful for you all to think about how can we be praying. And let's just start here at the address. Who are you praying to? We're praying to our Father. He is perfect. He is good. He loves you. He delights for you to come to him. So go to him in prayer. Now, I know for some of you here, this is also tricky because when you think of the idea of father, some of you have some pretty rough relationships with your fathers. Maybe you don't get along. Maybe it's hard for you to imagine a father who is good or loving or faithful. And for that First off, I just want to say, I I am sorry. I am sorry that that may be a struggle. And my prayer is that for you, there would be hope and joy in that relationship to come. But even if not, I hope actually that this passage is an encouragement to you, that you do have a perfect, loving, heavenly Father, the best Father, who sees you and says, you are mine child. I hope that that would be something that encourages you. Not something that discourages, but that you say, hey, maybe my earthly father, and it's, it's tough. I, I love him, or maybe, maybe you're like, I don't know if I love him, but it's tough. But I hope, and I leave you with this encouragement, that you have a heavenly father who delights to hear from you. I'll close with one last quote here uh, that talks about this idea of God being our Father. It's from my favorite theologian. His name is J.I. Packer. And he says this in a book called Knowing God. I know there's a lot there, but it says this. You sum up the whole of New Testament religion, of Christianity, if you describe it as the knowledge of God as one's holy Father. If you want to judge how well a person understands Christianity, find out how much he makes of the thought of being God's child and having God as his father. 
If this is not the thought that prompts and controls his worship and prayers and his whole outlook on life, it means he does not understand Christianity very well at all. Father is the Christian name for God. Let's find hope in the truth that we have a heavenly Father. Amen? If I could ask the praise team uh, to please come up as we close with a song of response. And would you join me uh, in prayer? Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for who you are. And today, as we are gathered here, we ask that you would move in our hearts to surrender to you, to trust you, to be honest and intimate with you, to pray with all hope and joy and expectation. We would show you respect, but also know that you call us, you draw us near. Thank you for being our Father, for loving us so. And would you turn our hearts to you? We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. If I could ask you all to please stand for the song of response. We're going to sing this song, A Good, Good Father, again to close. And I just want to encourage you all to take reflection on what we're singing, on who God is and the love that we have. Sing, I've heard. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they
I am. It's who I am. Sing that again. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. so good to us. You are so faithful. You love us so much. Would we come to you in prayer? Would you help us to surrender to you, to experience your loving faithfulness? Thank you for being our Heavenly Father, for calling us to you, and being perfect in all that you do. Thank you. To close, actually, uh, we're going to uh, start something different. Um, so, Steve, I think I have one last slide in there that says the Lord's Prayer. Uh, as we are in this series together, I want us to close our services with the Lord's Prayer uh, for all of us saying it. So it's on the screen there. Um, and so we're going to say it. We're going to say it a little slowly. For, for now, I will be on the mic, right, since it's probably going to be a little awkward for some of you. Uh, but moving forward... We're going to move away from the mic, and we're just all going to recite this prayer together. Remember, this is the prayer that God called us to pray. And so I encourage you, even if it's a little awkward, to actually say it with me. We're all going to say it together. And with each week, as we reflect on uh, what each thing means, I hope that it would set in deeply in your heart. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, so we're going to close with this time, okay? Uh, so I will lead us in that. We'll declare that and we'll say amen and that'll be the end of our time, okay? So if you could follow along with me, and we're going to read it slowly and, and really reflect on what we're saying here, okay? Ready? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for uh, coming today to service. You can leave your chairs. Uh, there's an event that's going on today after church. Actually, if I could ask you all, um, maybe stay in the gym for like five minutes, just because I think the KC service is still finishing up. And after like at 110, you can head out. Uh, if you need to do retreat payment, we're going to set up in the back there uh, shortly, and you can give us the money then. Uh, Chu, Mason, and Jean, if I could see you in the back there in just a little bit. Thank you all. Have a blessed rest of your weeks.